Hey everyone, my name is Greg Gilman. I'm one of the founders of Science Blockchain. There's been a slight change of schedule. There's supposed to be some other Greg up here who's going to actually give a very interesting talk on a variety of security theories, security theory. But uh, we jumped me ahead because I got to go catch a flight. So uh, I have a security token in the wild. I'm probably the only one here, which means there's a bunch of disclaimers. You should read them. Uh, nothing I say should be taken as investment advice, and every forward-looking statement is probably not going to come true. So uh, Science is a six-and-a-half-year-old incubator and venture fund in L.A. Uh, we started with the, about a $40 million uh, incubation vehicle six-and-a-half years ago and created about 75 companies out of it. Um, uh, we also have a $75 million venture fund, and we now have a, about $12.5 million nominal value of our, uh, of our blockchain vehicle that we raised through our own ICO last year that was, as I mentioned, a full securities offering where we did Reg D and Reg S offerings, and those will be, those are securities tokens forever. So I'm fortunate to work with a, with a couple of great partners. Uh, Tom, Mike, and Peter uh, are the guys I started the company with, and then we're, we have a great staff that actually makes us look good uh, when we're out doing ridiculous things like deciding we want to do an ICO for a blockchain incubator. Uh, and they make it possible for us. So of those companies we started, we've had $450 million or so in follow-on funding from uh, Silicon Valley predominantly. We've had six of those businesses acquired for an aggregate of $1.3 billion. The largest of those was Dollar Shave Club, which started in our offices uh, and was acquired for a billion dollars cash last year by Unilever. Um, we got into the blockchain space about five years ago and we built an early exchange, we built a Coinbase competitor, we built an early mining operation because electricity was included in the, our rent at that point. Uh, as you can imagine, when our rent like tripled overnight, our landlord was not inclined to include it in our future lease uh, and wondered why uh, the power bills were going through the roof. But uh, if any of you have engaged in mining, you know how power intensive that can be. Anyway, we couldn't get any of those businesses banked and our board decided that discretion was the better part of valor, and we shut down all of those businesses, uh, much to our dismay looking back, because a Coinbase competitor would, be, would have been a good thing to have, but more importantly, we were building, uh, taping out a, an ASIC chip for non-Bitcoin mining, which as our partner in that venture, Brock Pierce likes to remind me ever so often, uh, was at least a billion dollar mistake that we made. So we clearly have not been flawless in our decision making, but uh, we were all very interested in it and remained invested personally in the space. And with the rise of Ethereum last year, uh, or a year and a half, two years ago now, we decided to jump back in. And that was because Ethereum presented basically uh, entirely new business model opportunities for startups. So those of you that are now pursuing a lot of those opportunities, this is what we were looking forward to and why we jump back into the space, right? Because you can solve a lot of the problems that startups face, that our portfolio companies had faced, that used to take a ton of time or a ton of cash to solve, right? So you can build marketplaces that don't suffer from chicken and egg problems because you can incentivize the sellers or the buyers to be there. Uh, native tokens on these systems provide this type of incentive to accelerate growth while also providing an entirely new funding mechanism, right? So one of the questions I get asked most often is, what do we actually learn from our token offering? First of all is that this shit is totally unnecessarily complicated, right? Just to do a security token offering in the US last year, I had to have a Singapore issuer that became the sole LP in a Cayman fund that then in turn funded US incubation activity, right? This doesn't need to happen. So ultimately, what we need is some regulatory reform and clarity that will lead to an environment in which it is easier for US companies to issue security tokens. Um, however, the time is probably not yet come where security tokens are, uh, the market is ready for security tokens, right? So even as, a very high profile security offering last year that went out with the goal of raising a hundred million dollars, which I already told you we fell well short of because we raised about 12 and a half, with coverage in the Wall Street Journal and everywhere else, uh, we ran into resistance. And this resistance came in two main pieces, right? First, 
traditional crypto investors did not want to go through uh, all of the KYC procedures that told us exactly who they were up to the standards of the investment bank that was running our offering, and then also go through the accreditation verification, which meant marrying their wallets and their ID, right? Most crypto investors weren't there at least six or nine months ago. Second, most institutional investors were not there. Of the 150 or so venture funds that have invested in science in our various vehicles and our portfolio companies, a grand total of two of them participated in our offering, right? Because custody was the biggest challenge faced by all of them. So when I was having conversations with them and they'd say, okay, so I give you 10 or 15 million bucks and you give me back a, an alphanumeric code. So what happens if I lose that? Can you give me another one? Well, no, but what I can give you is this hardware wallet with this 20 word seed phrase so you can rebuild your wallet if you lose your, if you lose your private key. All right, and what happens if I lose that, that seed phrase? Well, then you're totally fucked because then you've totally lost access to everything. And that usually ended with the, you know, we love what you guys are doing and really wish you well, but you can get out of my office now, right? The next big reason why institutional investors are not participating is there's no liquidity. You're pitching them a vehicle that has liquidity, but there isn't a market in which you can trade security tokens. While there are half a dozen of these that are gonna come online over the next, you know, one, six, 12 months, never, allegedly, they're not online now, and there's no liquidity guarantee when they do come online. So those are the hard truths if you're thinking about raising a security token. But so was it worth it for us? Hell yes, it was worth it for us. We now have a network of global, a global network of accredited investors that actively invest in security tokens and in crypto projects generally. We know more about compliant offerings, having gone through one ourselves, than anybody else because very few people have actually done this. And we can use that knowledge to actually help our portfolio companies, many of which envision doing an ICO in, their, in the future. So what are we working on now? Spring Roll, which you'll hear from later, is one of our portfolio companies, and they're here. Uh, they're an attestation verified reputation with linked rewards on the blockchain. So think about it as LinkedIn with, with rewards for people actually telling the truth about their background. 8Base, which is uh, enabling everyone to build uh, blockchain and traditional software applications. And then Synex, which is actually bringing smart contracts to the business and corporate mass, uh, building on a PKI platform that's already processing 100 million transactions annually. What are we looking for? For those of you who are building companies and are, are here today, we want to back entrepreneurs with track records, if possible. All three of those companies have entrepreneurs that have, successful, have had successful businesses in the past, have real teams and real financing behind them. Ultimately, we're looking for logical implementation of blockchain businesses for our blockchain incubator. Don't shoehorn some business model that makes no sense in order to have a token to raise money. It doesn't work for us or the, the, the larger market. And ultimately, we want entrepreneurs that are adding value to the ecosystem what, through either their projects or the infrastructure that they're building. So I had one more announcement for today. We actually have just launched the Science Crypto Opportunity Fund. So much like we paired our traditional venture fund with our incubator, and our venture fund gets all of the insights uh, that come out of our expanded knowledge of our portfolio companies before it makes investments. Our hedge fund is open to institutional investors only who want to potentially create that same relationship with our existing blockchain incubator. So they get early level access to key deals. Uh, and we believe ultimately that that managed crypto portfolio will outperform traditional investments as ours has over the last uh, 15 months that we've been running it. My contact information is here. Thank you all for your time. Talk to you soon.